Who couldn't use a grand, boy? You can go fund to yourself 30 past every hour, about nine minutes from now. Another keyword for you, each one of them. Got $1,000 attached to it. Uh, Cavs lose last night, 119 to 113 was the final against Boston. Uh, they're off tonight and tomorrow, and then they'll be in uh, D.C. to play the Wizards on Friday night. So that'll be a 7 o'clock tip. Cavs in D.C. Uh, here on WMMS. Your FM home for, you know. Um, so, yeah, that's that whole thing. Alan was Mary at the casino the other night. If so, she was very nice. Um, Sunday yeah. night you were. Yeah, me and on Ramon Rivas. <laughs> yeah, on drugs. Did me you and talk Ramon to a Ryan customer? Dalton. I don't. Nobody mentioned being a customer. Oh, okay. But maybe. Mm, yeah, the three of us were goofing off and hanging out and catching up and stuff. All right. Well, there you go. Congratulations. I try to be nice to everybody I meet. Is that true? I really do. Yeah. I'm not a very mean person. Anger isn't really a, one of my my prime emotions, if you will. Okay. Bill gets under my skin. I get more aggravated than anything else. But I'm <laughs> but not a mean you person. Make it I'm so not easy angry. To get under right. your skin. Yeah, probably. You don't just have a day where you're just like, I want to be mean. Today. No, I don't. I'm not a mean. I'm I think not you mean. should allow you a, a good mean day at least once a month. There's times when I think really mean things, and I don't, but I won't say them out loud, or I'll say them to like my sisters. I'll text them and be like, I just got to say this real quick, and then I'll feel like guilty about it. I'm not a very mean person. Hmm. I mean, I don't. I don't get that vibe off you, but... You that know. I am? No, I don't get the vibe from you that you're a mean person. No. When I go home... Pretty nice. ...from both of my jobs, I just unzip myself, and I'm just like, all right, I'm just going to let the insults roll. <laughs> <laughs> just unzip like, yourself. Well, you are a mean person. No, I put on... No. You are happily a spiteful and petty person. You're my chief petty officer for a reason. Petty and mean are two different things. Yeah, but they're cousins. Mm. They're cousins. They're yeah. different, though. If you're capable of one, you're yeah, you're absolutely capable of the other. I can be mean. I've been very mean to people before, but I don't like it. I've Have you said, ever told I've them that's why your parents mean. don't love you? No, I've said mean <laughs> things. Only, that's why your parents got divorced. You I are the only, reason. I've said that to. I've said very mean things to my family members. Or probably the meanest I've ever been is to people in my own family. I like you. That, I think that's kind of how a lot of people use very really? personal things against them. Yeah, we're very not mean to each other. We're, it's more just like. I don't know. You guys well, don't now, even talk. You have yeah. to talk to be mean. I was gonna say it's hard to be mean to people when you don't have any conversation. <laughs> yeah. You know, right. you know I, I, my family is the same way. Like we don't, you know, we're not mean to each other because we don't. Nobody ever really talks involved. about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I handle every situation appropriately. It's only when I'm provoked th- that. Yes, you know, but your I, level of provocation is extraordinarily low. Is what I'm saying. You consider being provoked the smallest perceived grievance. Is you being provoked? But why do you have to do anything at all to me? Like I, I'm leaving you alone. Why are you messing with me? <laughs> period. Hey, I can't argue with that. Like I didn't. I can't I didn't, argue with that. I don't but just come you know, for you. You don't but come it's, for it's, me. It's life. People are going to bump into each other. Okay. And, you well, know, then you'll learn all, your lesson. Learn your lesson. You get those hands. <laughs> not, not even hands. I will. I don't need a knife, bitch. I will cut you with words. Like, yes. <laughs> all ten that he knows, he will cut you to the quick. <laughs> Boy, it's in there. If it works. Alan, why isn't Bill crying yet about Mary having a blanket and a scarf on today? <laughs> She's ruining the live stream. <laughs> He's made his peace. Because it's very warm in here. So yeah, are, are, are you okay? Not. Well, it, it might interest you to know that we actually have a thermometer in here to what measure the say? room temperature. 74.5 no degrees way Fahrenheit. way in a million years is it 74 degrees This is a thermometer that measures the room temperature Where of any room. Where are you that sitting next to? Se- what is it? It's, it's in, in the, the room, room. In the air. If it's 74.5 next, degrees Fahrenheit. There's no way it's 75 degrees. Are you trying to <laughs> yes. convince everyone that these machines are giving that. off? I just showed it to you. She's like a Republican with the facts. If you now, put it right next to a monitor or something pushing out hot air, that's different. It wasn't. It was Push, on the, the only thing pushing out hot air is you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't see that. No, Can't that's be. fine. In fact, this is next to a monitor that is currently unplugged. <laughs> Good. So it is not giving off any heat. And if it were, it wouldn't be giving off the equivalent of 74.5 <laughs> degrees Might Fahrenheit. So, You're, again, just to I want you to be comfortable, but you literally cannot say that the no. room itself is not warm. It is objectively warm. I am warm. warm in this room. I know. I also don't have socks on today, I'm, which is what the blanket <laughs> If you want to see her feet, follow me on Instagram. You're They're on my creep, story. And he, so creepy. <laughs> I have one guy who texts me every day about Mary's feet. What a weirdo. Well, follow me on Instagram. They're on there. Ugh. Yeah, but how do they look? 
No, Not right, great. Right. I need a pedicure. And if you don't want to see Mary's feet, follow me on Instagram at Radio Cody B. There you go. Or if you like me as a person and you're not just into my phalanges at Radio and Cody my B. extremities <laughs> at Mary Santora Comedy. <laughs> Alan? No, I, I, I don't really. I, I don't know where he I doesn't care. Got the followers. Find me on Cameo at Alan Cody. <laughs> there, there you, you go. go. No, I need a pedicure bad. What's your rate again for Cameo? I'd have to look. <laughs> you don't know. Oh, my God. I forgot to tag you. I went to the mall today. I was in the food court. And a we were... Rotisserie chicken? No. We were talking, what, Monday or Tuesday about our price per hour for sex. Yes. <laughs> missionary sex. <laughs> and Cody said his was a number five at Taco Bell. Uh-huh. And the number five at the Taco Bell at the mall was a nachos Bel Grande meal, which is arguably the worst thing at Taco Bell. Never had it. It's nachos. Oh. It's nachos and cheese and sour cream. And, and they put Bel Grande sauce on it, I assume? I guess. I don't well, know. It's, it's a nachos Bel Grande, but you also get a taco and a drink. That's mm-hmm. a number five. So you, one hour of sex is worth a nachos well, Bel Grande. Well, video. actually, the joke's on him because I'm eating my food, and then he has to deal with the repercussions because I'm getting my food up front. <laughs> so whatever he gets, he gets. Number food up front, he's getting the danger <laughs> up back. <laughs> Gross. So my yeah. cameo rate is $30, pound cake. Ooh. Nice. They want to set it too high. They want to set it too low. That's like four nachos Bel Grandes. Hey. Look at you. Maybe I should change it to that. There you go. Four nachos <laughs> Belgrandes. If you want me to wish your grandpa a happy birthday. I'm not a nachos person. I like nachos. I like it's actually nat- National Nacho Day. Is it really? Uh-huh. I wow, thought it was National Saxophone again. Day. There's always There's more always than one day. There's always a national oh, my Someone said goodness. Me a... I can't keep them straight. I like... I'm I am a jerk when I eat nachos because I go for the one that has everything on it every time and then I stop eating. That's them when what everybody gone. does. There's a sketch think, about that. But oh really? I oh, was it in your dumb show. <laughs> it's on um, my very funny show. There's just not a good ratio to it. It's there's so many more plain chips or chips with a little piece of <laughs> olive on it. Than well, yeah, there because are the actual... toppings only cover the surface chips. Right. But people so know that going point? in. Well, you know that going in. I like chips. Well, because it... then when you're left with the chips, you still have the salsa. Like most restaurants, I think do a pretty good job of nachos. I don't think I would get fast food nachos. But like if you go to a restaurant, you go, yeah, give me the nachos. Mm-hmm. I'd be hard pressed to think of a place where I was like, those were awful. Usually, it's just if I get... chips I, I like and chips meat and... and tomato. Like, yeah. like chips and dip. I like. Dip it in guacamole like and stuff that like that. Too, but, but like, like the fully loaded nachos, there's a policy where you can't have all the fully loaded nachos. I will eat every single one. If you get nacho, if we get nachos to share, I will eat every single fully it's loaded. It's against nacho. the restaurant's Don't rules. Care. Don't care. <laughs> if people get fully loaded nachos to share, you can't eat all the fully Watch loaded me. nachos. Well, then you're making a case for people getting their own nachos. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. When people are like, let's is get this an something, appetizer. Is this something that you would mention on a date? I would say let's not get nachos. Bro. Well, why withhold nachos from them just because you're greedy? Because I'm gonna be, you're going to be even more mad about me being greedy and taking all the you good chips. you got to show them no, the no, no. real you, you person te- that you are. You tell them nachos are great. We just need to each have our own giant plate of nachos. Just so you know, I'm going to eat all the best chips, and you're not going to be happy about it. <laughs> yeah. That's why I think if I were to make nachos, I'd do it in two layers. Layered nachos. Layered all the stuff, more chips, all what? the stuff. The trouble but is that the makes it soggy. <laughs> yes, it I, makes the I upper, would, it I makes like the that, upper deck of chips You like soggy. a soggy chip? I don't mind a soggy nacho oh, chip. Oh, you're going to be single forever. I probably will. But yeah, I don't mind if the nacho chip is a little bit soggy because I, I would rather have all of the toppings <laughs> and the chip be a little soggy than a crisp chip with like two tomatoes and a jalapeno on I'm it. I'm in college, a buddy of mine named Charles, champion swimmer, guy went to the Olympics. Always in the pool. We call them soggy chip. Soggy chip. Oh, soggy chips. <laughs> but that's, yeah. I like them. I will eat them, but the, I only end up enjoying. You're on record. I only end up enjoying like six or seven bites. Because then the rest How of How many like, do you need? Or, well, what are we doing here? Are we not just for a meal? Are well, we splitting it as an app? What you are we just doing? said when somebody says, let's get some appetizers, I inferred you meant appetizers. So I do, I feel bratty. I feel <laughs> selfish and guilty when I eat those seven chips that are perfect because no one else gets to have any. But just tell them. But that's what I'm going to do. Hey, guys, let's get, you know, some big, depending on how many people are in the group, you'll get a couple right. of things, right? Right. Like, I'm not a big, greedy app person. So if somebody goes, oh, okay, let's get one of these. I go, cool, I'll have one. And yeah. then you guys can... Like, I'll have a piece of a flatbread or whatever, a mozzarella stick or something, or a couple wings, two wings. Yeah, sure. But when it comes but to nachos... But all the loaded nachos. I want the best pieces every time. <laughs> you I'm not the, a good share. You do the I old, that's nacho cheese joke. I'm not a good share with that. Okay. Well, I've got $1,000 here that uh, hopefully you won't have to share with anyone.
You can load all your own nachos with this and go fund yourself. Good luck. Hey, it's Rover. Go fund yourself. We have your shot at $1,000 now. Text the nationwide keyword ROCK to the number 200-200. You'll get a text confirming entry plus iHeartRadio info. Standard data and message rates apply in this nationwide contest. That's ROCK to 200-200. Good luck and go fund yourself from 100.7 WMMS. Well, uh, guys, the bar has been raised on marriage proposals. Uh oh! Did someone die? Almost. Because that's well, there's the person that was underwater that died, right? At that uh, submerged yeah. hotel or whatever. Not yeah. that. No, this guy is a sergeant with Chicago SWAT. Uh oh! And he ran a 15k race in full SWAT gear for charity. Jeez! And he was about 500 feet from the end, and a woman has a heart attack, so he does CPR on her. And gets her back to, you know, to they can get her to the hospital and she's okay. Then he finishes the race. Oh, she and then messed he up his time. Proposed to his girlfriend, who was right there. She's a beat cop or something. You know, they're both police officers. Wow. So he's what running. She said no. He's running. <laughs> he's running, saves a woman's life, and then proposes to his girlfriend. He had a good day. Top that. Yeah. That's yeah, pretty good. I was almost done with the race, and my plan was to uh, propose at the finish line. And I hear people screaming, medic, medic. Definitely a serendipitous moment. Mostly what I was trying to do as I finished the race was come up with something good to say. I was totally thrown off. He gets out on one knee, and I thought that he was hurt. And then he just said, Aaron, I don't know what to say. I think I finally did say yes after yes. I realized. So I did, yeah. yeah. No, I'm positive. You but you want to put the ring on, so. Yeah. What if she she's said, like, you got the ring on, so, you know. Yeah. What if she's like, absolutely not. You were just making out with that lady over there. <laughs> what this was lady's that? laying on the ground and kissing you start on kissing ground. on her. Pu- pushing on her breasts. Heart attack like my it. ass. Yeah. This is all set up. <laughs> <laughs> you picked yeah, the, the wrong audacity that's right to ask me to marry you after you're just making out I with some lady watched you cheat on me yeah i saw it right there in my eye line the what pound cake unmitigated gall unmitigated gall <laughs> <laughs> right i was waiting for bill to say my boy did it. it i was like i'm waiting for it wait for it wait for it <laughs> how about you use it so the guy was stressed out he's like i don't know what listen the guy missed a perfect opportunity, right? His proposal, he's all flustered. What he should have said was, that woman's heart is alive because of me. My heart is alive because of you. Oh, I would fall out. <laughs> and still say no? <laughs> it's a freebie. Mm-hmm. From me to you guys. If you happen to save a woman's life by CPR... That is, uh, granted, that's a a rarity. You have to do that to use that line. Mm -hmm. Great line, but sure, you've got to set it up. If no one has a heart attack in front of you, you have a friend fake one, in earshot, in the eye line of your your potential fiancé. I would go with this. I would be like, while I was performing CPR CPR on her, I was saying, ah, 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 staying alive, staying alive. And to you, I want to say, ah, 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 being my wife, being my wife. <laughs> I wasn't sure where that was going to go. You pulled it out. I thought he was heading right for the ground with that one. Because what's, what's that from, Mary? The office. Yeah. Oh, it is? Yeah. Oh, well. But still. <laughs> <laughs> Women and gay men don't feel obligated to say yes, even if your you know, boyfriend right. does save uh, a life. Don't feel obligated to ask. You don't have to feel obligated to ask, but if you're... If a guy is compelled to ask, don't feel compelled to say yes if you're not feeling it. Do it right for you. I think a lot of people you. say no. Right, but I'm just, I'll, I'll repeat what I said from the jump in that whole fakakta conversation is that um, by the time someone asks you to marry them, it's not going to, you guys saw Megan Gailey on Fallon last night? Yeah. I didn't watch her set, but I saw Killed her it. outfit. Mm-hmm. But she talks a lot about getting engaged, and she's like, there are no surprises when you're getting engaged. And nobody's like, What? You know, mm-hmm. you, you've been together for a while. Yeah. You know what's coming. You live together. You you've take already a picked, vacation. You yeah. picked out the ring. Yeah, right. right. That kind of thing. So, don't feel. Com- I don't know who you're talking to, Pound Cake. Because there are a lot of people who have not felt compelled to say yes. I'm so fascinated by these people who go. Well, I said yes in the moment because I didn't want to feel bad. Yeah, right, easy, I don't get that at all. I like, did that. That's what I would do. That's what you did. I did that. Unless I, you I said, talked you about said, this a couple weeks ago. I know, ago. but unless I still understand, unless you're on a jumbotron. I don't know why you'd say yes and then no. Because I thought it would fix things. 
Uh, you we thought had it problems, and, it and I thought that maybe getting married would fix it. Wow. <laughs> I understand that saying that out loud makes no sense. Uh, but also but in I your defense, right you had never it. been married mm. before, too. I'd How would you know? I've never been married before, and in the moment, I was so excited about the idea of being in love and this yes. being a thing. And The idea, even, not the actual. No. Yeah. The actual day that he proposed, I was like, I should not say yes to this. And I knew that I shouldn't, and I did anyway. He was drunk. He was so drunk. I knew guys who were, I was sober. He was wasted. I knew guys who, and probably some women too, but my only experience has been with a couple of guy friends who were like, I mean, they're divorced now, but they're like, <laughs> the day of, they were like, I knew that it was the wrong move. I'm like, mm-hmm. why wouldn't you just, call? I know, granted, there's the families there and people who spend mm-hmm. a lot of money, but man... Like you back you go, out, you go through the whole rigmarole. If Easier you know. said than yeah. done. You have to I fake a fight. You can't just like break up with him. Like I'm not feeling it anymore because he's like, why did you stream me along? So you have to like talk about why have you never gotten me a Popeyes chicken sandwich? <laughs> like you have to think something completely. <laughs> out or of the you bloom. can just be honest with the person that no, you love and you, say, shut hey, up, I don't think up, I want to spend the rest of up, my life with you. This shut is up. why yeah. Poundcake's not going to be married because right. he's going to fake a fight about a Popeyes chicken <laughs> sandwich. But it's a, it's a you can fight. easily but, just cheat your way out. <laughs> yeah. Lots of great ideas here, no, guys. You'll be the bad person. All. You gotta make the, you gotta make it. We got a real like think it. tank here yeah. from yeah, yeah make, but make it's, the other person think it's their fault. I <laughs> make them think it's their fault. Yeah, well, like, it probably is their fault if like, you're cheating. I mean, you're like, not I, happy. I did get you a Popeyes. Right, but they're, you away. but they're gonna know it's not their fault. Yeah, they will. They're like, wow, I know Pound Cake really does love chicken. Why didn't I think to get him a Popeyes? Who are these sandwich? simpletons that you are allegedly engaged to? All a of lot a sudden? of them. These people who are <laughs> easily manipulated by pound cake. Oh, yeah. I'm very charming, Alan. Charming's got nothing to do with being able to properly manipulate people. No, Everybody's charm. Something to do Everybody's with it. charming about. Well, it depends on how much uh, value you put on charm. You know, a lot of charm. Charm can go a long way. Eh. Eh. A lot of people can be charming in one way or another. I mean, if you have 10% charm, that means 90% you got to fill up with other stuff. Yeah, but when you meet a really charming person, especially a really charming man, you're like, eh, it's easy to be like, oh, swoon. No, but charming is great as a first impression. Yeah. Charming, you got to shoot it all out at once, right? No, you can be charming over the course of a relationship. Right, but as a relationship gets more and more realistic, the things that you initially thought were charming, charming become annoyances to you. Uh-huh. That's Maybe. not new information. It, so you mean like you? I mean, even if you've never been married, you know that in a relationship, the things that you kind of looked at at the beginning and were like, eh, like on the first. You, but you took them. Yeah. After a while, you go, I'm not well, doing I've this anymore. Well, I've said this before that guys will think doing stand up is cute and maybe charming, and they're <laughs> like into it, and then they're like, oh, you're just not around for 22 days. Great and I'm example. Like, yeah, that's exactly. You knew this going into it that that's right. what it was. Right. So. They heard right. the information. They didn't know what that meant. Right. Or and like, again, not you know whatever. If you're down, if you're out at dinner and a guy orders for you, you're like, wow, I've never had a guy be Ugh, so assertive. Don't like, even. But it's like on the first day, it's like, dare. wow, he knows what I. No. Like, he takes charge, and then after you're like, all right, well, you I would can like take to order charge by menu. picking the restaurant. Don't you dare try to pick my food for me. Uh, the lady will have nachos, <laughs> not fully loaded. And you know what? Why don't you go ahead and lighten up all the all the toppings? <laughs> well, no, for not, her. that's how she likes. Not it. pick your food, but order. My dad always ordered for my mom. He didn't pick the food, but he would you order find out for what her. She's gonna get yeah, it. if I have to pee, maybe. Like if I, I I'm like, hey, I'm gonna go to the bathroom. Get me, a, <laughs> get me the steak medium was, with broccoli. I think it's pretty old school. I just oh, think because I, I think my mom liked that. They're you know they're pretty traditional yeah. or whatever. It's not something that I would ever do. I mean, the lady will have the beef Wellington. I like to let the lady Tell order me. first, and then I go, really? <laughs> That's want, a lot, isn't yeah. it? You want a garbage oh, bag yeah. with that? Kind of a lot, yeah. No way. I thought we were going to do things later, but I guess not. All right, that's fine. Uh, separate checks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, uh, they're putting the Goodyear, <laughs> you see the Goodyear blimp they're putting in the College Football Hall of Fame? It's going to be an honorary member there of the College Football Hall of Fame. How this exciting. December, the National Football Foundation is inducting the Goodyear blimp as an honorary member of the College Football Hall of Fame. There you go. Congratulations. Yay. Sorry, Eric Dickerson. I know you really wanted to get into the College Football Hall of Fame. He's got to be in. But a blimp beat you. I don't. I don't think he is. That's a shame. Sorry, Jay Cutler. I know you really wanted to be in the College Football Hall of Fame, but a blimp beat you to it. Do you think Jay Cutler is more famous than that blimp? No. But not in the ways he wants. That's what I'm saying. (laughs) Sorry, Joe Namath. I think they feel like they missed a couple of people before putting the blimp. In. It's the equivalent of Whitney Houston getting into the Rock Hall. Oh, it certainly <laughs> is. 
All right, I got a break. I'm going to have those. Uh, we're going to put somebody on Bill's carding team around 420. We're doing the Alan Cox Show High Voltage Indoor Carding Challenge on the 23rd of this month out in Medina with me and Bill and Poundcake each having our own uh, carding teams. Mine's taken care of. The Cox Rockets will do Bill's team, the Cartiac Kids. Uh, next shot at 420 for you to get on there. 35192 on a text for anything or listen live, watch live at alancockshow.com. It's the Alan Cox Show on 100.7 WMMS. And every-